Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarathi, and this is the Eve Universe Show CSM 16 coverage coming at you this time with Isaac Collins. We know the rules. We have 50, we will give 50 minutes to discuss with Isaac his platform and whatnot, and then give him 10 final minutes to discuss anything that he might want to uh, get across that we may have missed up until that point. And then we are out one hour total. Let us begin. How are you doing, Isaac? I am doing fabulous, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Of course, it's good to have you here. Uh, before I begin, I guess one of the things that's kind of confusing is normally I I put the corporation of the uh, person, or the alliance, rather. Mm -hmm. You guys are just a corporation being uh, the Rancer. What is the full name of it? Rancer. R Rancer, Rancer um, Office. Rancer Office. Uh which is a corporation, yeah. not an alliance, so I don't have anything to put there. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your organization, just in case people don't know. Well, um, we're a subsidiary. I guess the closest thing to an alliance, you could say, is uh, we're, we're, we're affiliated with No Handlebars, would be the closest thing to us. Um, a, a guy over here uh, kind of curates the area. We've got a community of people, basically, here, and most of us are in a uh, Rancer Custom Office. Um, we're primarily just a uh, gate camping uh, group that likes Rancer. Um, we, uh, that's, I, I, I would love to say that's much more unique than that, but it's, uh, it's just guys that are 30, 33 years old, can't really spend four hours to go out in fleets all the time and get no content. So it's a bunch of guys that are um, fairly uh, middle-aged or getting close to it and uh, just want to have some fun when we sign on. So living a dream, uh, more or less. All right. Um, and then from that group comes Isaac Collins, who, who feels that, that he has the voice that needs to go before CCP, uh, and he needs your vote to get him there. What, what is your platform? What is your deal? And why should people vote for you? So I've got a, a few different things on my platform. Um, the, I suppose the most so the controversial one would be that um, I think the security status of systems can be uh, shifted around a little bit. I think we can have some more interesting interactions. Um, for that, I, I'm not just including uh, LOSEC in that regard. Um, I would be interested in some really unique ideas like what it would look like to have a high sec or low sec pocket or island in the drone lands or something like that and having more conflict zones for people to fight over to territory uh what about having a, a high seg zone in garista space that you need to have garista's faction with to even occupy um things that are really changed the dynamic that allow you to kind of live this new life and stuff like that um but uh, another aspect of that is i think non-faction warfare low sec should be uh, a fast route it should be used uh, more or less intentionally on purpose for saving time when traveling through missions, traveling through uh, hauling to uh, market to market, similar to Vakami and Rancer as they are currently. Um, and uh, I think we should have more zones like that because they spawn uh, fights over controlling the zone, which is content. They spawn bait, which is content. They spawn wormholders dunking on you, which is content. Uh, they spawn um, people kicking you out of the space because it's so valuable, because that's content. Um, I think gate camps are an integral part of content. Um, and that's uh, the, like the, the lion bulwark of my uh, campaign. Um, but I do have some other views, uh, but I'll let you kind of ask me some more. Sure. Sure. Well, okay. So, uh, appreciate that. No, uh, just for some clarity, <laughs> Rancer is a, is just one low sec in a small chain of low secs that are often used as a way of, of, uh, certain like sneaky Traveling industrialists. Hack to to, right. Exactly. The, the, the transportation from heck to Jita, uh, can be cut. The, the number of jump, jumps can be cut significantly, by cutting through this very short period of low sec, these three different jumps with Rancer right in the middle. So a lot of people like to cut that corner and meet their fate with uh, Isaac and his crew. I dodged you guys at least once, and I'm pretty sure I might have fallen. I was about to say, I mean, it's not impossible. Um, yeah, there's there's a few people that, that, that come in and get away. We're, I, not, we're not perfect. I will say that I, I think I, I, I legitimately believe that I have a small stockpile of stuff in Rancer that I just stashed there because I knew that you guys like already had the next <laughs> jump. And so like I just don't know what to do with it yet. So one of these days I'll figure out what to do with it. Uh, 
<laughs> just sell it over there, man. We'll, we'll buy it hot sale. That's fair. That's a fair point. So your point is, is that you, mm-hmm. you have found this, th- this, um, uh, quirk of circumstance, this this risk versus reward that has generated content from for you, and then subsequently you have been mm-hmm. content for other people, right? So just like the the circle of life, it's a beautiful thing, right? Yeah, it's it, it is exactly the cycle of content. Yeah, and and so your suggestion is that you would like to take what you have learned from this and help ccp understand it fully so that way they can apply it to other things other routes and the rest of space to create other interesting choke points and potential positions of conflict is that basically cover that's that's a that's a primary uh, thing yeah okay of, of, of that specific issue yeah that's that's more or less i i do have a concern um as a as a lore enthusiast uh, I would add, I would say that like mm-hmm. so high security space means that space that is that is tightly controlled by Concord, which is not the same as the empires themselves. So I, I've thought about this. Yeah, so, I've actually thought about this. So now that you mentioned that, because uh, um, so what if for the lore of like the drone lands, right, like a high sec pocket in drone lands, w- we can just say Edencom att- attempting to like get back at these drifters and drone regions and all this stuff have taken over an outpost of land, you know, effectively. Like, I think there's a lot of ways you can interweave it into the current narrative. And I think actually now it's probably the best time you could do something really dynamic changing like this. I think this is this is prime real estate for like map changing and uh they've already done it with pov chen or pov chen or, I, I don't know how to pronounce it and um Poshvin. they've already done it with uh multiple other things they have yes pov posh fin it's um it's and they've Russian. already uh oh, done okay i'm not either of those things so i'm <laughs> going to mispronounce it i promise um <laughs> Uh, but uh, so I, I think now is the perfect time for this kind of um, opportunity. Um, so, yes, I understand your point about Concord. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think they could just replace that with Edencom and uh, get effectively the same result. Well, Edencom is effectively uh, I mean, Edencom is commanded by Aegis, with, which is a department of Concord. So, yes, if if Edencom took a uh, over a place in the drone lands, and the, like, for instance, the fucker have floating cities in the drone lands. Um, if for some reason Edencom was able to project their mm-hmm. forces somewhere, then that would potentially raise its security status. That's a good point. Uh, I was I was bristling to the idea that the Garistus would be okay with increased Concord yeah, presence it's, I mean, in their that's, home that's territory. A, that's a fantasy thing. <laughs> Uh, I, that's, a, that's a fantasy saying, but I think it's interesting, right? Because like, what if you had like a like a, imagine a, a position in space, and the Greece does venal or tenal, I forget which one it is, right? But you can do like level one, level two, level three missions in uh, their version of high sec and low sec. I guess you could call it something else if you really wanted to. Um, um, that would be more like lower, lower, like you know, outposted zone or something like that. Um, right. But yeah. an area where if you don't have the right standings, you get concorded by the Garistas, right? Like, wouldn't that be an interesting flip on the things? Because right now, there's no benefit to being a pirate right now. Um, you, if you have negative 10, all you do is you get attacked on the gate by people with 5.0 status, or you get attacked on the gate by people that uh, are, are like bombers bar and something like that. Um, I, I want to see pirate ships have bonuses for negative sex status, and I want to see the Navy rework they've been talking about. I want to see it have bonuses for positive status sex status or positive faction status um i think that's a, a really unique way that we could start we could start really making these things matter again these themes and and, and play styles like it would encourage play too i think if you have imagine a faction warfare group that has like high security status then they want to go bashing the pirates and down in low sec or something like that i think that would be more interesting and it would be like much more content producing in my opinion it's, it's going to give you an incentive to fight certain types of people all right so, so your primary, uh, your primary thing is that you think that CCP should use the systems uh, of of system modification that they used in invasions and, and such in order to shuffle around or make a more dynamic uh, secure you know map with the eye of creating these choke points mm-hmm. and interesting stuff, and you want to be able to help them. Uh, yes, absolutely. Add, adding okay. to it, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay, so just Absolutely. so that way we don't have that be the only thing that we talk about. Um, any, do you have? You said that there you have other p- positions that you want to go over too. 
I've got I've got other positions. Yeah. So um so a couple that would be controversial is I want more content out of the wormhole people. And one thing I know that they hate, right? One thing that I know that they hate is having to scan crap down all day. So I would be entirely like if I had the opportunity to push for this, I would do it in a heartbeat. I want the wormholes to be like infinitely easier to scan down. Like I want if one probe touches it, it's a hundred percent. If you've got like astrometrics five and all the supporting uh, skills to four. Um, I want more wormholders coming out to attack me. I want more people going into wormholes and I want more like wormholders roaming around the world or, or the universe of New Eden. I want more content from this third of systems that barely interacts with us on the, like a regular basis. Yeah. Um, and I think that would be something that I think almost anybody would get behind. You, do you believe that the worm wormholders and people that do the scanning want it to be uh, made easier like that? I can't imagine they want it to. Uh, have, I mean, you've you've scanned stuff down quite like, a bit. Do you want to do seven triangulations for five seconds at a time? Is does that sound like fun every time for twenty two signatures? Well, I I don't want it to be trivialized to make it so that it's just push a button and make it work um, the first time because well then, for then wormholes it well just it's just for worm it's it's not for data. That's well, fair. maybe, so saying, but it so might have, saying, make it so I that, just think so. The transportation ones are easier. Just the exit entrance. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, it's it's possible. Um, I, I guess my question is, uh, it's so just as something a, as a person who's trying to be elected to the CSM. You're phrasing all your positions by how controversial they are, but generally speaking, as a member of the CSM or somebody who wants to be elected by the CSM would would be. Uh, presenting it as like this is the popular opinion that I wish An to idea, bring yeah. forward. This, that would be... How are you going to get elected on controversial opinions? Well, I don't know if this opinion is controversial. Okay. Um, okay. I know that a lot of the fatigue wormholers experience is, is is having to do maintenance like this every day, having to scan down every signature, right? And that that's incredibly not new player friendly. I mean, how many new players go into a wormhole to, to feel like they're doing chores all day and then don't get to participate and just end up quitting? I, I, I've spoken with people and they've, they've told me that's a real experience they've had. Um, some don't like the idea of like maybe the implants lose their value because of this. But, but I mean, it's just the wormholes that are getting this that, that I'm advocating this kind of thing. And then, I mean, to your point, I'm not a developer, right? So I, I understand that I'm not going to be able to like uh, tell them what to do. This is just these are these are kind of the things I would support if where I'm coming from. You broke up a little bit at the very end there. The last few a few sentences. Oh, uh, it's, it's it's just so so people can get an understanding of what I what I support and stand for. It's like mm -hmm. I I know I'm not a dev, but these are the kind of ideas I would suggest if asked about like you know, well, what do you think is a good thing that can help wormholers? How can we get them to do more content? Well, I think if you make it easier for them to travel, I think they would they would do it a lot more. If they could find places quicker, I think they would do it a lot more. That's that's good. But I mean, like if. If your goal is to get wormholers where they're going so that way they can get started with what they want to do as opposed to the journey, then yes, this definitely uh, makes that process easier so that way wormholers can focus more on the, the destination and the journey. I just, uh, my concern is, is that wormholers are generally explorers, which are all about wandering and about the journey. So um, it'd be interesting to actually talk to wormholers to yeah, see whether true. or not that would be something that they would even advocate for i, I would definitely love to hear I would, I would definitely love to hear from them um and if you know if that seems something that's going to rage induce people i'm not um i'm not a rational or infallible uh <laughs> so these are positions i've thought about and some of them are uh good and some of them are bad and if they're bad i want to hear people's criticisms of them because i'm very receptive to uh to that kind of stuff that's a good point. Uh, another thing i support is i think brawling ships need to have uh more more health um i think if you're putting blasters on a ship you should have more ehp than if you put uh rail guns on the ship and i think a big part of the problem that the null sec metas and all metas in general fleet metas is that right now brawling is just not encouraged in any shape form or fashion i think people want to do it but they can't because if you put a, a rail guns on a ferox or blasters on a ferox it has the same exact ehp this is something Tony had brought up recently, and I agree with it completely. Um, I think it would be really interesting if we had, like, you know, 
an increase either to speed or an increase to damage or an increase to their health in some form or fashion um, when you're putting on short range high damage modules that are taking up a ton of power grid i think those ships should get some kind of benefit for it um i also uh let's see well, I, I, i'm a big fan of some simple reforms so, so oh go on uh, i was just gonna say um while while go i ahead. agree that it does have the same ehp um the with the ferox the thing is, is that the DPS to EHP ratio is different at range. The problem with the Ferox in particular is that when you can scale up to the numbers that null blocks can, then that smaller DPS ratio doesn't matter anymore because it's solved by just having enough people, right? So like if you if the if the DPS threshold to make it so that you can no longer save a single ship uh against uh against incoming fire with a single logi or with your logi wing uh is you know yeah, five yeah. blaster with, ships with sir missiles or, or, or immune and yeah yeah it's like 10 it, it could be 10 blaster ships or it could be 50 feroxes but it doesn't matter because i can bring 50 feroxes so mm -hmm. now i can just fight at ferox range yeah but that but but that also means you're bringing so that that means if you have 400 feroxes right then i can bring like what is that uh freaking um 80, 80 Feroxes of Blaster Fits, and potentially I, as a smaller group, could win that fight, in theory. Sure, if you could get on top of them, but that's always, I mean, that, that is technically true right now. If you win it, if you got on well, zero with the Blaster just, Ferox, We have that new formation. That's true. So, well, no, but if you go on zero with, with Blaster form, with, with Blaster Feroxes right now, you will get eaten alive by webs scram this that like you've got no benefit you get you get capturing you you've got no there's no benefit there's no like increased survivability that you get meanwhile if you stay 150 km off range you're gonna be able to stay alive a lot longer just you get you get to move faster you get to live longer you get to hit more people i mean there's there's it is, a clear advantage it is true that a brawler has to deal with all of the EWAR when while kiters basically have damps, jams, and like tracking disruption, what missile, yeah, you know, weapon disruption to deal with, and that's basically it, which aren't uh, aren't the same level of danger as scrams, newts, webs, and other close range effects. That is absolutely true. So brawlers may yeah. need extra additional uh, tools to deal with that. Uh, and thus, raw EHP just simply isn't the solution. That's an interesting thought. And it uh, could it could not be the solution, but I'm I'm just I'm just saying uh, that there's something like that. I think there's something there. You know what I mean? Sure, you're absolutely right about that. Okay, so uh, that's two down. Any other position? You were trying to move on to another position mm -hmm. when I interrupted. Yes, yeah. So I had I have a one that i think you're going to be on board with it would i would be really shocked if you don't like these so i thought a lot about the bounty system and there's a lot of people that have tried to make reworks to it and the more i thought about it recently the more i think i actually just like the old system um what what i want from the old system is i want the top 10 bounty hunters that are like always up there i want it to be based off of activity i want to see if if no one's on that top 10 list has killed anybody within the last week or the last three days, I want to see a new cycle of the people that have that have the highest new the like the new highest bounty with the most recent amount of kills. So I can start hunting them. Because I think you can hunt these people. You know, we've got Z kill, you can look these people up. Uh, but it's useless if the top 10 people haven't played since like 2010. Um, so I, I think it would be nice if they would turn that bounty system back on. And if they would make it so that you can, uh, that they, it tracks like the, the top 10 board by the activity of if they've killed a ship recently. Um, that's like a, a simple reform that I've really thought a lot about recently. Um, and then another one is uh, the Corp Finder tool. Um, I think the Corp Finder tool needs to have a couple of changes to it. It doesn't need to be rehauled like overly. Um, I'm someone that plays in really weird time zones. I, I, I play uh, at night. I play at 0500 uh, Eve time. I'm very late. Um, and I get to play again, like I play 0500 to about 0100, and then I get to play again at like 1700 to 1900 right before I go to work. Um, so I need a corp, or I needed a corp that that played an AU time zone. Um, CCP has said that the number one three, like number three, top three things that like are good for retention is one, if you die within the first 30 days, two, if you get into a corp 
within the first 30 days. And three, if you get into a corp that is less than 95 players big in the first 30 days. Those are the three best things for keeping a player in the game. Um, and so if you're a new player in the game and you go to the Corp Finder tool, you put in your time zone, right? All you've got is everybody listed their corp as I play 24-7 and I do PvP, PvE, wormhole, industry, da 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 they, I do everything. I think that's mm -hmm. garbage. I think they should be forced to pick an 8 to 10 hour time span. I think they should be forced to pick what their focus is, PvP or PvE. You could say you do PvP and industry, but your primary focus is PvP. Um, so I think people should be able to pick, like based off of this like category, what their primary focuses are and what their primary play zones are so that people looking for a corp will know that they found a corp that plays in their time zone and will have active players in their time zone and does the thing that they want them to do. And then uh, I would also like them to stop letting people renew the adverts like well past a week. I would like it if they make it so you can renew it once every three days and then a buffer day of a, an additional day right before the end. So you can bump it every like up to every four days. Um, so that way we get all these inactive dead corps that don't play the game or don't do anything out of the freaking tool finder. Um, so those are like just a, a, like a two really simple reforms that would have a significant impact that I think that I think they would go for immediately, to be quite frank. I mean, this is a new player experience. This is what they're all about. Um, I think I could tell them to them on day one, and I think they would they would be all about it. So <clears throat> what I'm hearing overall from a couple of these complaints is that you over need or you want the information that's presented to the players to be much more fresh, right? That that corpse much are more stale. fresh and accurate. Right. Cor there you know, there's corporation ads to corporations that are barely uh active or maybe even inactive. There are bounties for players that don't play the game. You know, the, basically what you're suggesting is that yeah. across the board or in many different ways CCP's the information that CCP provides in client doesn't remain flesh fresh, especially when it comes to other players, and therefore providing additional information to players will help them make better decisions. Does that basically cover it? Uh, correct. Awesome. Cool. All right. So, what drove you to take these opinions and go instead of putting them on the forums or you know? Uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> what what has caused you to be like? No, no, no. I want to be elected to the CSM to, in order to bring these forward. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad that amused you. Oh, I'm just a very vain and egotistical person. No, that was a fun. That was a fun phrasing. Um, no, I, I enjoyed it because uh, so I saw like some of the people are running and um, not to to crap on anyone or not to talk badly about anyone, but um, Ron USMC, who I thank for his service to this country. I'm a big fan of vets. Um, I think that's a very admirable thing to do. Um, he's got a kind of different opposite approach, and when I saw his approach, um, it flabbergasted me to be quite frank because I think I th I believe that gay camps are so integral to content. Um, even even just like to really put this into focus, imagine you have these guys gate camping next door and they're killing people that you're constantly dealing with, like that you give a crap about. Now you have to go and beat them up and evict them out of there. Like it's it's content almost always, like no matter what situation it is that you're dealing with these people, it's content. Um, his his views on it are so antithetical to mine and like diametrically opposed that I felt a real at the very least I needed to get my voice out there so that people have an understanding of the opposing view to his I've offered mm. to, to talk to him on any of the shows my own YouTube channel his his uh, twitch or here or anywhere uh, and his response was I do not put people that I do not know on my stream so you know even if it was <laughs> putting them on my crappy YouTube channel with five so, like subs that's I, I don't it's, it's not I don't I'm not looking for clout I'm looking for a conversation with someone that has the opposing view. He's uh, he's not um, suggested anything about wanting to do that. So it's a bit disappointing, but I felt the need to um, that the opposite side of his of his vote needs to really be heard. I guess that's, that's a really so, like push this to the precipice. So that's actually an interesting point. And I'm so I'm I've been doing this thought experiment in the last few um, interviews that I've been doing. And uh, I'll actually repeat the scenario that I did for a previous person. We uh, we think I I bring up a a hypothetical design scenario and we discuss it, you know, as if you were on the CSM. Mm -hmm. This was something being brought to you by CCP. But um, so okay. in Eve Echoes, 
Eve Echoes, basically everything is one step safer than they are in EVE Online. So there's no mm. ganking at all in high sec. Yeah, no gate guns. And and the gate guns in low sec are so strong that they that basically gate camping doesn't happen in low sec because you can't mm-hmm. sustain even battleships on field with the gate guns. Um, and so, mm-hmm. uh, but there's also no D scan. And so while you can't necessarily see if there's a danger in a site, also people can't hunt you down just because you're in the site. It also means that if a mission mm-hmm. runner is doing a mission, you can't really catch them on the gate and you can't really catch them in their own mission. So unless they do something wrong, missioning in low sec is actually reasonably safe in, um, in, uh, in, Echoes. You can suicide gank, but e- all gank camping in low sec is kind of considered to be a sort Even of suicide Even in null sec? Gank. Null sec is the same. Null sec is, has, has normal, no guns, no nothing like the player owned. Null sec is basically the same in Echoes as it is in EVE. Oh, so, so they have gate camps in null sec, right? So they've Correct. just moved them to null sec. Right. Okay. And, and so you, can, I, you can have I just, gate camps, I... but there's suicide gate camps in low sec in order to like take out strategic mm-hmm. assets or something like that. Like you would see in like Uudama. That's kind of like what Tama is now, mm-hmm. if more or less in 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 Echo. So now, I don't. I'm not asking oh, you to advocate for that because that clearly is like the opposite of what you're going for. It's but, the antithetical, yeah, absolutely. But the idea that like maybe some of the low set gate guns could be made strong enough, like the entry gate guns, such that going to do what I found interesting was the idea that doing things in low sec PVE things wasn't a bad idea. And so more people were doing them. And since people were doing them, that meant people that were doing them were making mistakes and then they could get caught and killed. And that actually increased the amount of life in low sec. So I advocate to you, not all of the guns, but if we made the gate gate guns stronger, that could potentially bring more life deeper into low sec. Thoughts? So I would say that maybe at that point we just call it high sec. I mean, there's no point. Like it's it's just glorified high sec. So that, in that case, low secs become high sec. Or we have now where it's treated like low sec is. I believe Phantomite really nailed it on the point in his interview with you, where he, he described um, low sec has kind of been treated as a stepping stone to null sec, which it should not be. It's um it's a place. This where it's supposed to be autonomous. We're, this is supposed to be. We're not supposed to be at the behest of the empire or the other empires in Nullsec. And I think he really, I think he really hit that on the point. I couldn't agree with him more. Um, to be quite frank. Uh, so I, I think Losec, the, the bigger issue is like, um, you know, people, people suggest like passive incomes and stuff like this, right? Um, and stuff like that would be like supers from snuffed or supers from goons or supers from all these other places would come and take the best moons and if you touch this you get killed or evicted um and i think you can see that already in this like case because you see citadels in these systems that have like 25 jumps right citadels in these crap systems that are nowhere all with the local tags of every other alliance in the world and the reason they're there is because if you dare threaten these things, they will crush you with like the might of whatever coalition they are. I think the bigger detriment to low sec has been null sec. Um, and I think the biggest detriment to low sec has been the the crappy faction warfare status that we've had. Um, I think I don't have a solution for faction warfare, but I don't think um, the gate guns are a part of the issue. I think gate camping in low sec is always going to be a thing. Um, even if we have to put four uh, or five logi on someone, we're going to do it. So increasing the damage amount seems irrelevant to me. Um, I would be more interested in making more and adding more incentives to go to low sec. So I have this big thing written out about like suggestions of the dynamic bounty, bounty system building off of that, increasing the level sites of like data, relic, and um, combat sites after 150%, and then again at like 190%, increasing it to like null sec level. Um, I think that would make it so that people from high sec would want to come to low sec and risk it. And I think that would make it so that the people living in low sec can do some simple, basic PVE, like scanning stuff down and get some decent income. Um, I don't think we should be trying to go back to a prehistoric time of, of uh, passive income. I don't think that's going to be a good idea, um, just simply because of the way that the mechanics have worked. 
it's going to support the bigger coalitions more than it supports the lower color the smaller coalitions well, um and i don't think that's the game we want to be quite frank i don't think people will like eve because it's we can have two areas that are safe like uh like high sec and low sec becoming safe i think people like eve because it's a dangerous game um and you're never really safe no matter where you are i think that's what makes eve interesting and, and so unique and I, I don't think anybody wants to take that away. I would be um, in support, though. I, I don't like um, to, to, I guess, preach to high seckers, I guess. Uh, I do not like that with the current minerals changes that it's it's really cost easy to just kill an empty freighter. I really think that's kind of gross. So like, if they're going to keep the changes like this the way they are, I think I would be like on board with suggesting that they raise the health of freighters a little bit so that they at least have to like sacrifice like more nagas and more more uh catalyst or whatever to kill these these guys because the fact that they're just killing them even when they're empty for the sake of killing them seems ridiculous to me like when you're killing a hauler in high sec you should be killing it for the loot like you should be killing it because this person's autopiloting and there's loot in there i don't understand why like you're killing them just for the sake of killing them it doesn't maybe you if you've got a vendetta with them maybe but it's like I, don't, I just don't think it's i think you should put more in the game so that you're dissuaded for just doing it for for no reason that's all. Well, that, I, that's a really good point about uh, low sec and um, you know playing off of the the gate guns and all that stuff. And um, the issue with suicide ganky and high sec is is also a very complicated one. But you do seem to have a very good eye on the idea that hit points basically in this equation just means minimum requirement of what it takes to pop mm -hmm. open the egg to see what's inside, as it were. Um, yeah, well, they know what's inside. That's well, what's grotesque about it. I, don't, it, I really don't starts, like that. They, yeah. But they don't know what actually ends up dropping. That's what I mean. Like, you you know what's, yeah, what yeah. could be in the prize, but you don't know what's in the prize until it drops. I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about, like, straight out of the... Like, yeah, it should cost more, especially since the, the Nagas and Feroxes are going to go down in prices in the near future. But, right. like, you'll see on the kill board, they just kill empty ones. And it's like... I, I i just i i don't like it i just something about that viscerally feels bad like that person's gonna have to pay, pay like three times what it's worth to replace it so part of the big uh thing with this rea uh, industry changes is the need for a, a huge increase in the need for these r4 moon goo and the reactions that come from them r4 moons mostly are in high sec and in wormhole space and while wormhole space can mine it and do their reactions and that's really good income for wormholes they already have their income that's fine these high suckers can mine this moons and that's all fine and good. But if they don't have a place to react it, then it doesn't do them any good. So at this point, at this point right now, if you have a way to react, you can get a nearly thousand percent return on your investment by reacting R4 moon goo uh, into this, these components that are used, especially like uh, reinforced carbon fibers for the various capital components and all that stuff. Do you think that this could potentially be a return to a passive income for for low sec? Just merely having a reaction center that in low sec allows you to do this kind of income. Uh, do you think is it that only will... in low sec? Is it? Well, you can't do it in high sec. So and, and well, the, it did then that's... And bringing the materials I, I feel like... to null sec is going it, it, like it's much more efficient to move the the finished reacted materials. So it, it behooves somebody in a high sec, like if a high sec agency could just have a single Athenor in low sec, they could turn that into passive uh, income. That's interesting, but I'm not certain because it would really, that's a, that depends on the person that's doing the reactions, right? Because maybe you find like a little crappy system where there's only 67 jumps a day, which there are many low sec systems like that, which is, uh, I, I think, insane. Um, but uh, you can put an Athenor down on a lot of places, and the, people aren't going to contest it. I mean, right. and even if they do, it sounds like you're making so much money hand over fist with this that you could just afford to keep dropping them in random places and do the do the reactions. Um, so I, I'm not certain. I'm not certain. And I'm, to be quite frank, I'm not. I'm not uh, well versed enough in in industry related stuff to have a hard position on this. To be quite frank, I, I'm not going to speak from ignorance. That's fair. Uh, it, I just it I was could thinking be because possible, we're talking but about I don't passive know income it. and having assets in low sec and having these kind of, like it's the idea. It, well, I don't, I don't like the idea of passive, passive income. income. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I think the passive income in low sec is the corpses of the of the, the ships that 
you you kill. That's that's what the that's why it's so hard to replace stuff as a low sec person. You like if you want passive income, I like the the gas mining that we have now. Like I like uh, I'll have my eyes mining the gas, and it's like you know what sixteen million an hour, but it's like it's something that feels like passive income. I get to spam D scan when something jumps in the system. But it's not it's not the best thing in the world, but it's something. Um, but I, I would be happier if we had more options. Like especially with the dynamic bounty system, I think they can improve that to a really sophisticated level. But uh, but go on. I'm sorry. No, uh, actually, that's a really good point with the dynamic bounty system because because of that dynamic bounty system, it actually makes it so that the bounty equivalence in low sec is actually way higher than in null sec most of the time because null sec systems will be ratted yeah. down. I, low sec systems have a lot of conflict pushing it up. Therefore, if you could find sites to rat in. Those rats would be pretty valuable comparatively, but the problem is, is yeah. that I don't think that the balance of rewards from low sec to, to null sec based on risk versus reward of understanding null sec as being more risky than low sec for some reason. Um, like, I don't think that is made up for by the 200% bonus because the rats in null sec are so much more where you know in well, that's the issue so that's that's what i was saying uh like they, they should raise the difficulty once it gets to a certain threshold i think you should right. be producing bigger havens and and hubs and stuff like that so that it's comparatively better and i mean honestly you know we will get some people that come to do an escalation and ransom sometimes and we'll try and catch them and stuff like that but i mean we don't catch them all the time um people still do stuff like this in low sec they still take the risk they still think they're they're you know untouchable essentially so like if you make that more uh, like uh, a desirable right like you make the income from that like potentially higher uh there are a bunch of dead low sex systems that people will go to looking for this income and there are a bunch of systems that people will come at weird hours looking for this system and i think that's just more content i think wormholes might come through uh if the wormhole loot ever gets nerfed um looking for some some bonuses i think I think the system's in place already, and they're a big fan of it. So I think building upon it is going to be an easier sell to uh, CCP than um, than trying to come up with an alternative answer to it. What do you think about um, events, uh, especially events that bring focus to specific areas of space or even low sec uh, areas? I of love space? them. Okay, great. I love these events. Um, there was one event that I did two years ago. I wish I could remember the name. But what they started doing, and I don't know if they do this anymore, was they would make it so that you had to come and mine some ore. And unfortunately, they would still have the rats spawn for the like limited time ore, which I really don't think you should do. I think they should stop doing that, like whole, wholesale stop doing that. Right. Um, because like new players, what was great about that system is like new players could come in they mine this limited ore. It sells for a fuck ton, dude. I remember dudes making like brand new dudes making like 200 mil like a few hours in just just mining this crap. And then they they get they give it to Jeter or whatever, and they could just buy the the accelerator boosters or whatever the basic accelerators. And then like you felt like you had a, a pipeline for income. It like it felt like a lifesaver. Like I think I all my alts had like mining five and strip mining just because of this event. Like I remember. You you would you get the limited of ore, you'd like trying to get it as much as you can and sell it and buy the, the the accelerators. I think it was a great system because it would also give you the BPCs to make them. So like it, it would get you like in this like industry brain where you're like looking for the twenty percent reduced uh resource spending uh like Athenors and stuff like that, the the the, the retarus or whatever. Like you're you're going around looking for like all these things to build it so you can spend the least amount of money. And uh it was just fun. I thought it was really it was a really unique way to bring people into low sec and it was a really unique way to get more people like new players a stream of income and I I kind of wish they would follow that model. I hope they still do. I don't know if they do though. Uh the last couple have actually had a hacking site and a and a combat site, but there have been some uh the last Christmas event had a mining component. So there was a mining site where you could some of the tasks okay. survive going in there. Um so they've been That's they've good. been mixing as long it up as the player is not too hard. Um uh, so, but I'm I'm running low on my time, so I do want to bring up another issue, which is that you are in support of the effective removal of super caps in low sec, which this is a big controversial issue. Um, I talked effective about effective removal. Yeah, so I I kind of want to drill into that. So so obviously super capitals have a huge impact on low sec, and as we talked about in the Phantom Mine interview, you know low sec people not being able to build their own supers means that in order to have 
territory or being able to hold apex level strategy, you know, like tactical positions like an Athenor, you need to have super capitals or else you're going to just be eventually kicked over by super capitals. Uh, however, the mm -hmm. other side of the coin is that Titan bridges are super useful and like, it, yeah, it'd be unfortunate to take away that capability from low sec altogether. So why don't you speak on this issue? Where do you think super capital should be in low sec? So I think Titans bridging has to stay. Um, I think it has to stay because it's really interesting for content in general. Um, I love Titan bridges. I think they're really good. I don't think that's what makes the, the oppressive thing is not the Titan bridges. Um, the oppressive thing is like like titans in low sec are not the problem um what's the problem in low sec is like the uh one the ability for supers to just still even with the nerfs they're still able to really make life hell for subcap leaps but um i think pro god legend really hit this point to the best and i i think the worst part about capitals and super capitals uh, in general is they're just not interesting Interesting or fun gameplay and the barriers to get into them are insane they're just insane it's like a hundred plus days of training to fly just to get into it not even to be like proficient just to get into it it's like 132 days of training what kind of new player that sees this ship is ever going to be able to, 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 to like in, even uh, think about flying like you, you tell them about four day train times for a level five skill and they have an aneurysm and and we're going to try and like just make the norm for these people to like to see these ships but more importantly i'll get to i'll get to your point um i don't think supers do anything but uh, allow blocks to effectively harass low seckers into uh, capitulation um and more on that would be like you know uh i was in this area that's being that had the cc uh keep star and at the time we were allies with um, a group that was an, a friend of Siege Green. And because of that, we were effectively told, we're gonna come and help defend Siege Green or we're going to be evicted by Siege Green. So you get kind of bottlenecked into these positions of something that you had no reason to be involved with and no care to be involved with. Um, and I don't think that's good for anybody. Um, I would like a, a more focus on subcaps in general. Um, and I think Progod is really accurate on his point that, when people do fleets, they want to be the guy that's manually piloting. They want to be the guy that's doing transversal velocity and and getting in close and getting a nice dunk and then getting out quick uh, and you know running the space, uh, manipulating the space and really you know showing people what they're made of. You don't do that in a dread. You don't do that in a super carrier. You just sit there and you get hit. And if they have more, you lose. I just don't think it's interesting or fun. I think it's bad for the long term health of the game. And I, I would I would be very pro super carriers being neutered in in uh, low sec and um i don't know if i would touch dreads right now because i know I, I understand how important they are but i really would not i just don't like them i just don't like them i think they've taken away from interesting gameplay in the game well supers have their own uh supers and carriers have their own rts gameplay which could theoretically be interesting but um yeah i think that the big issue is is that a single super like it it almost doesn't matter how big the subcap fleet is like it yeah if yeah. you don't have supers then you or or a dread bomb then you don't have a counter and even then they just drop their second super and then you're like okay well that was fun yeah um, well it's just it's it's, it's 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 not even an i win button it's it's i feel like supers have uh like removed more content than they've ever had the opportunity of bringing into the game so but how would you suggest fixing them in a way that doesn't influence like or how would you fix them considering that they are used in other parts of space besides just low -tech? listen i i would ask if you want me to as a fix for that i would be very frank with you and say i would i would go to someone like suetonia and i would go to someone like stitch k and i would ask them what their suggestions are in this thing because if you asked me what i would do i would say delete super carriers and carriers right now and i know that's not a coherent or a logical position to take so um i would i would ask people that are much more um eloquent and uh and much more uh know have much more knowledge base of dealing with these these kinds of uh threats on the field as, as a subcat pilot and ask them what their opinions are and what their ideas are for fixing this because to be quite frank i'm a shitlord gate camper um i don't have the fleet experience uh i know how 
to uncloak a holler really quickly if you guys want me to do that. I know how to run a hick with no prop mod and run nice. uh, four damage props so I can sit there and camp on the gate and get somebody at all angles. Um, I know how to smart bomb really well, but I do not know how to fight capitals or super capitals. I have a dread. I don't like using it. I've avoided using it. I don't have a single kill with it yet. So if you um, want to break up the and... answer gate camp, you know how to do it. You've got 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, t true. Big true. Um, You've got 10 so, minutes. Uh, yeah. Go for it. Whatever you need to say. <clears throat> I would uh, I would ask everybody to please consider me for your vote. Even if uh, it's not your first vote, I would ask you to please still consider me. Um, I'm not some expert in everything that I do, and I'm not some expert all around in any things, but I have enough uh, humility and humbleness to uh, admit that. Um, and if I'm not well versed in something, I'm not going to advocate for anything on it. So you won't see me speaking about industry changes without asking industry people what to do. And if there's industry people on the CSM, I would be very happy to have them go and speak uh, on the matters, much like I think Mike Azria did last time. Um, I do think CCP's election system is a bit flawed. Uh, I would rather them have candidates assigned based off of like... Uh, I would rather we need representation of all people. Um, I don't like the current like setup. So like you can have, I think there should be like you know four null sec candidates, one wormhole, one low sec, one faction warfare, one uh, industry, uh, and all these. And and I think people should be running based off of what they want to focus on. So you know I'm the low sec non faction warfare candidate would be the better like thing and let people vote independently of that. I think that would be a much better system than what they have currently, because currently, you know, I, I think people like Jurius Doctor are really important to the CSM and I hope he gets elected, but um, he should be the NPE candidate and they don't have anything like that right now. So, um, you know, the system's flawed, but uh, still please consider me for your vote um, because I'm gonna work really hard. Um, I hold uh, Brisk Rubles, the golden standard for CSM. And uh, if I get elected, I would do my best to emulate his uh, demeanor and decorum and his uh, cadence with the uh, communication of players. Um, I will respond to any and all mails. If you guys want to send me anything, please do. Um, and I've got lots of suggestions, simple suggestions, not ones that are just for low sec. That'll be hopefully able to help make your lives a lot more interesting and fun in New Eden um, and make them, you know, give you more content. I'm just after more content for everybody all around. Um, and that's really it, man. I, I love this game. And I, I love gate camping. And uh, and I'm not going to stop that anytime. And um, I hope everybody else would enjoy having more content in their lives. Because I know I would. And I, I think that, that's it. I don't need the full 10 minutes. Awesome. I think that's all I've really got to say. Cool. Well, just to wrap things up, just a couple of last notes. Uh, how long have you been playing this game? When did you start playing? Uh, so, I, yeah, I guess I didn't tell you. So I started in 2013. Okay. Uh, my friend got me into the game, and I thought it was stupid at the time. I was like, right-click orbit. Ha ha ha. That's so dumb. Like, big ogre head brain. Um, and uh, so, you know, he uh, he takes me around, and he gets me to go through low sec with a hauler, and I get my uh, butt blasted. And at that point, I'm like, well, what, what just happened there? Because I had a basically a heart attack. Um, and I was like, what just happened there? Because that, that, was, that was exciting. Like, that felt good. Uh, and he tells me, you know, that was a gate camp that you just ran into. You just got, you got dunked on. Or, like, at the time, you got owned or whatever. Like, 2013 memeology. Yeah, WTF um, barbecued with... Yeah. Yeah. yeah L LMFAO'd. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, so, yeah. uh... <laughs> So um, he's like, you got you got crushed, and uh, I was like, well, we should be doing that. And so we move out to syndicate, or like right next to syndicate in solitude, and we gate camp the exit points of uh, where test was moving. So like on my early kills, you can see a bunch of uh, kills on test when they were moving around and getting out of the places uh, from from Fountain War, I think it was. Um, their like logistics line was right near that area, and we were killing a bunch of them. And the only reason I quoted them is because my friend stopped playing. Um, and so I came back uh, 2018, and I played for a good like year and a half. Um, and so like total then, net plus now, I'm, I've been playing for about two and a half years contiguously, uh, but across a time span of about eight years, nine years. 
Um, well, and so once I got back, I, I started camping. Um, I, I went to Pandemic Horde actually. Just I'll I'll get this done real quick. Went to Pandemic Horde. It was in the uh, the last war that they did, the X forty like uh, the the two thousand eighteen war they were in. And uh, I remember the moment that like I, I learned that I hated Nullsec because like <laughs> I actually enjoyed the PVE like the data sites, the uh, the relic sites. Those were fun. I I, I can see the cycle of content. Like the the escalations, I get it. Like chasing that money, it's exciting. I loved it. That that was that's still exciting to me. I still try to do that in my off time if I can. But um, the uh, we we formed up a fleet and we're like, we're okay. Well, we're gonna put you in a Griffin crappy ECM thing because jams are OP. So I was like, okay, I'll be the retard in the Griffin, and we're gate to gate warping because every single system is Sino jam. So we're, we're gating with these Titans and freaking super carriers and freaking uh, carriers or whatever. And dreads and all this crap is just taking, it took us an hour to form an hour to get there. And then we wait an hour and goons don't show up because it's X 42 and they don't know how Sino jammers worked at that time. And we take another hour and a half to get back. And I just, I just sat there. It was my Sunday. And I was like, I just wasted four and a half hours to do nothing. I, I left the next day. That was it. I was in pandemic order for two months. I left the next day after that. I just was done. I was so upset about that experience. And uh, as I'm leaving, I get blown up in Rancer and I, I speak to this guy and uh, uh, history kind of went from there. I made my own corp, got into Coastal Brotherhood. We lived in Furligar for a long time and uh, owned noobs. And then we came back and now we're living in Rancer. So well, that's the end of the story. That's a great story. And uh you wrapped up already and now they've they've they closed down Gita on me so i i think that that's a enough indication that we should probably head on out uh but nice, nice. thank you so much for uh coming and and chatting with me about this and i wish you the best of luck anybody uh isaac collins for csm 16 he wants to represent you in making eve a more dynamic and thus more interesting place Yes. Thank you so much for having me on, man. I appreciate it a ton. I really do. Sure thing. Uh, we're going to wrap this up, and then we're going to raid over to Gungix, who's doing his two months anniversary of playing Eve. Pretty cool. So until next That's time, very exciting. I'll see you in space. City.